yeah. I love my HBCU. And Bob, I love it, love it. I love it, love it. I love my HBCU. And man, I hope my team they won one. Yeah. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. Man. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. I tune into the HCCU Sports Lab to see if my team won a loss. If they lost, I'm quiet as a mouth. But if they won, she tab. Uh, I'ma do the dab, yeah. Dr. Cavill, yeah. he know what he be talking about. Talkin Mike about. and Charles, Talk. they know what they be talking about. Yeah. Talkin they about. compress the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they want a loss. Yeah. And who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor Yes Sir and pay attention because he's going to teach a lesson. This is Dr. Cavill with Inside the HBC Sports Lab with Mike Washington, Charles Bishop, as well as A.D. Drew. Charles, how's it going this morning, this first Sunday morning in the football season as we get things going? Yeah, I mean, it was an awesome day yesterday and... Uh, I mean, I can't wait to get into it. Got my morning coffee. Got my morning veggie juice. And Devil Swinney is somewhere sick. It is a great Sunday morning for me. <laughs> I did hear a little something about that. But there might be another sick person. Uh, Mike, uh, how you doing this morning? Well, well damn, I'm not as good as Charles. But, uh, <laughs> I, got, I damn sure have my coffee. Um. It was not. It, it, it was a good day in terms of football, but in terms of, of 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 how things ended out, I guess we'll get into that. So I'm gonna need an extra cup in between the breaks to deal with this heartbreak or whatever. But that's why you love it. It's a great weekend, great football, um, great stuff on the field. So I, I look forward to talking about it. Yeah, it sounds like you might be pouring something else in your coffee as well. <laughs> Uh, AD Drew, I know you moving around. That's why, so that's why it's a black cup. <laughs> AD Drew, I know you moving around to try to make things work, so we appreciate you finding a way to get in here on this first Sunday morning of 2024. How are you? First of all, I want to say for everybody who's either traveling to uh, to Miami, uh, Ohio, or Montgomery, Alabama today, be safe out there on that road if you're going to one of those games today. Number two, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm doing great, Doc. You know, it's uh, – how, how can I put this? You know, Doc, it's disappointing as a professor when you give people the cheat sheet and the study guide and people still fail to test because mm. I was getting tested text on yesterday asking me where to watch this game at and what, what time <laughs> this team play and all that stuff. I, I, and you guys were part of, you guys saw part of the uh, chat in the one group that we're in. I'm like, damn, obviously y'all didn't read the article that I wrote last week about uh, where to watch and, and when. So it's disappointing. I gave you the answers and you still failed the quiz. Yeah, that, that's tough. That's tough, Drew. When you do all that work and you do all this, as <laughs> you think you this, find out that they weren't listening. You're like, what? And the giving more pain is we talked about it on the Tuesday show. We talked about it on the Thursday show. We talked about it on the Saturday morning game time before everything uh, kicked off. So we had multiple platforms, and we shared it there. We told them where to go to the website. We put the link. So you're right. We gave the cheat sheets, the PowerPoint, the notes. And still, it didn't work out. So this is when you come in, like me, and had that crash session, and you go uh, kind of tickle your fingers on your students, and be like, "Y'all better wake up, y'all want to get this again." <laughs> I told you we was gonna be on the test. I don't believe him. Exactly. I told you right. that was gonna be on the test. <laughs> That's right. I'm, you're gonna get this F squared in your life. That's right. Tell them about it, Charles. Huh? Yeah, yeah. That, that F squared is real. It really is. <laughs> Well, let me give you these scores of the top seven programs that played yesterday in regards to the final scores. Uh, we'll do it for the Division II programs. NIA programs don't start the next week. And we'll take a quick break. We'll get in on the other side. And we have one of our first uh, coaching interviews of this early season. Uh, and we'll uh, talk about that on the other side. Let me give these scores first. We had no number two, Florida A&M, with another huge come from behind as they defeat 
South Carolina State Bulldogs. The Rattlers improved to 2-0 on the early season while the Bulldogs fall to 0-1, 22-18. to Jackson State played on Thursday night, and they fall to 0-1 as they lost to the ULM uh, Warhawks, who are 1-0, and that score was 30-14. to That game was 14-14 in the second half before it kind of fell apart. And number four, the Howard Bison, who also played on Saturday, uh, fell to 0-1, lost to the Rutgers Scarlet Knights, who are 1-0, 44-7. Uh, with the coach of the Bisons being concerned with a late score, he thought uh, that took place by Rutgers. You have number six, the Morgan State Bears. They defeat Hampton, uh, number 16, in my overall preseason index, uh, 30 to 28. Uh, Pirates scored a late touchdown, but it was not enough as the Morgan State Bears are 1 and 0. Uh, Division two wise, you have number one, Virginia Union, that just put a beat down on the Thoroughbreds. Um, Virginia Union, the Panthers improved to 1-0. and uh, Third Reds uh, are down to 0-1. 69-7 to was the score, and that was on HBCU Go. Number four, uh, the Panthers of Clark Atlanta University that I told everybody to keep their eyes on. <laughs> road win at number seven, Fort Valley State, who are 0-1, both in overall and conference records, 45-42. to uh, Clark Atlanta was really pulling away from him in the second half. Uh, the Wildcats had a vaunted push late, but it was not to do. So we see all that in terms of on the grill and the rat poison uh, that was put out there worked well in terms of getting this done. I'll take full credit for that. Just kidding. At number five, Miles Golden Bears, they fall 0-1. They lose a tough one to West Alabama Tigers, 16-15. With that, let's take our first break. We'll come back on the other side. And we'll have our segment with our first coach uh, surprise to get you on. And you'll find out who that is after this break. Stick with us. We'll be right back. At Auto Masters LLC, our mission is to serve our community by providing quality automobiles at affordable prices. All of our vehicles are inspected and certified to offer you the confidence in knowing you have a quality vehicle. Our goal is to provide you with a seamless process and positive experience for your automobile purchase. Financing recommendations and specific vehicle inquiries are available at your request. You can find us at www.automasters06.com and like, follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Also, please feel free to contact Terrence Miles at 601-927-7794. And oh yeah, tell them Sonya sent you. Press the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they want a lot, yeah. And who the ball? Who the ball? 
So listen to Professor, yes sir, yes sir. And pay attention, what? cause he gonna teach a lesson. Yes. This is Dr. Bill inside the HBC Sports Lab, and our guest is none other than the uh, first year coach, if you would, of the Clark Atlanta University Panthers, Coach Teddy Keaton. Let me say welcome to the show, and congratulations on the win, Coach. Good morning, guys, and thank you for having me. Oh, it is certainly my pleasure. Uh, as we get in here and talk a little bit about the game, it wouldn't be us if we didn't get a chance to kind of tease you and rib you a little bit. So <laughs> I'm hopefully I get a little credit for this wild – somebody out there or some group out there does this poll ranking. I don't know where they come from, you know, where they get all these computers. Uh, but they had you number four, and it came this little controversy in terms of rat poison that was out there. So uh, I hope for the rats – uh, cleared up and staying away. <laughs> well, well, obviously, you know, when you take a team that's 0 and 10 and uh, when you get a, a ranking and put a target on their back at, 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 at high of a ranking, and you just put us on notice with everybody in the league, they came ready for me. So, you know, I told my team it's rat poison. Don't believe none of that. <laughs> you're not that good. You need to work. You need to stay focused on what we're trying to do here and not get over, you know, too full of themselves. Yeah, Charles said that appropriately. He's like, man, how dare you put a ranking on coach? He's like, look, I'm trying to stay under the radar. I got some big plans over here. What are you doing? <laughs> Mike was a little bit about that, too, and he said, all right, coach. All right, coach. I got it. <laughs> I mean, I mean, that's a setup for failure. I mean, they posted them in the locker room, and they, they had plenty of motivation to tell their team that, you know, they ranked them here. You better go out there and do A, B, C, D, and E. You know, those are those are bulletin board type materials. So I didn't want any of that, you know, you know, not knowing much about the team. You know, we're learning players every day, trying to figure out what fits where. And, you know, um, I tell people all the time, winning is a habit and so is losing. And when you have a culture of losing, sometimes billboard material will make them think that they have arrived. Um, even a win will help make them think that, that they have arrived. They need to understand, you know, how to prepare, um, how to fight adversity, how to, you know, come in and know that, that now the world is on notice now. I mean, after Saturday, I'm sure that everybody in the world woke up and saw that, you know, David Wright's a real player. Those receivers are really good. Um, the O-line can protect them. Um, we got some areas we need to work in, and then I, and I do know that. Um, but for, anytime you can sneak in and go into a place like Fort Valley, uh, I mean that's that's a hostile environment. It's at one o'clock in the middle of the day. It's um, just all the things we went down fourteen, and being able to overcome that, you know, losing programs will find a way to lose. Um, and they, I was proud of my young men after being down fourteen and actually fighting back and never giving up and, and, and keep going through. And I was very proud of those guys. With that being said, I just want to say I thank you for being frank uh, with us. Oftentimes, we get coaches and they do the proverbial coach speak, which, which is their right. Uh, but the fact that you wanted to get out there and you understand and you give us a little insight to say, hey, coaches oftentimes do use these things for bulletin more material uh, in regards to trying to motivate their team. Uh, which is it's, it's a great experience for our listeners to really get that thought process. So I appreciate it. As we said, we're joking through it, that you shared that perspective. That meant everything uh, for us. With that being said, um, I think in some ways this is kind of the perfect victory if there's ever such a thing uh, where you show that you had the ability to play some good football, you got kind of close at the end. You can go talk about some of the things that you said in regards to working on how to get better. I'm going to let Charles jump in here and ask the first question if you don't mind, Coach. Well, well first and foremost, Coach, congratulations on the win uh, yesterday. But I think for me, the million-dollar question is going into this first game. Uh, and you mentioned um, a losing program uh, coming into this season. But culturally, what did you go in and, and sort of – uh, do with regards to moving this here, moving that there, to sort of change the face of this program coming into this game? Well, we did a lot of evaluating. You know, they do what every good, you know, I like to call myself a general manager, CEO. You're running a company. And, and the first thing you got to do is you got to evaluate the company, where the pitfalls at. And you got to a balance, you know, um, find the people in the organization that can help you, find the people in the organization that need to get off. 
And, and we did that. That's what we did. I didn't cut one soul when I got here. I just evaluated the team and I, I, I put them through winter workouts. I evaluated how they pushed themselves and w what, what would take the break them? What would it take to break them? And, and we pushed them as hard as we could. And I never had to cut anybody because the ones who didn't really want to work, they left on their own. Mm. Um, and, and as they left, we just started figuring out who we needed to go fit. And we had a mindset that we needed to be older and we needed to grow up faster. We needed to get better in certain areas. The old line was always a, a particular point that we knew that was bad. We knew the linebacking core was not a really good group of uh, guys because of, you can look at the stats. The stats tell a lot of things about a team. Um, but I knew they had uh, some good skilled players in certain areas. And we just kind of built around that. And and then when, when we got hit back in fall camp, I brought in a couple speakers. Um, and we, we let those guys, we do some what we call mental conditioning, as you'll see it in the documentary that we're, you know, we're kind of putting together here at Clark Atlanta University. Um, I think that football is not only played physically, it's also played in the mind. Mm. And to change the culture of losing takes a, a real, it's, it's more than me. It's going to take changing the organization from the equipment managers to the locker room, the way the AD and everybody else thinks. Um, I mean, you, you got to, you would be amazed. We went to church and I took all my kids to church. And that's like a big thing for me that they go and, and, and the pastor say, you know, you, you've you been losers. You guys are losers. That that hurts there. Uh, when you go to the cafeteria and the cafeteria works, you know, they say you're a loser. Uh, when you go and see the maintenance people and you ask them, could you, could you do such and such for me? And they say, you guys are losers. Um, that really resonated with me. And I reminded my team every day that nobody on this campus believe you can win. Mm -hmm. You're losers to them. I never let them, you know, forget the fact. Even when I spoke at the Love of CAU, I pissed off a lot of alumni. And I showed them the history of losing. Um, sometimes we have to take it all off and strip down to our bare minimum to understand where we really at and figure out how we going to um, grow up from there. That's fascinating insight, Cole. Thanks. Yeah. Mike, go ahead with your question. Yeah, Coach Keaton, I, I echo uh, CB's uh, congratulations on a terrific start, uh, but more so congratulations on the approach to cultural change. I mean, I sit here and listen to you speak, and some of what you say you can apply to the business I mean, to other genres of life. So I, you know, tip my hat. So my follow-up question is, you know, yeah, you know, you're starting to, to get to, get to the organization from a cultural standpoint. But one of the next steps when you're making a cultural change is how do you get them to bite onto the recipe? All right, you know, I got your attention. Here's the recipe. Here's the, here's the path. Here's the vision I got. How do you get folks to now accept that and own it as part of that cultural change? If you well, we try to talk about this term that we use in our organization called keep the main thing the main thing. So everything that we're doing, we control what we can control. We be where our feet at every day and understand we're trying to go one and over every day. We have 24 hours. Everybody have those 24 hours. How we use those 24 hours. Winning just don't happen on Saturday or Thursday or Friday or Sunday. It happens every day. It's continuous habits that we have to create in order for us to understand that when it gets to, I tell you kids, if you practice and you work hard every day, when it gets to the game, it's just practice with you. It's just somebody else out there giving it. And that's the mindset that we try to put in our kids. And, you know, we tell the players, see a little, see a lot, see a lot, see nothing. So we focus in on small things, you know, you know, focus in on those things like for five seconds, dominate your box, dominate your area, do what you're supposed to do, do your job. Don't worry about what everything else we don't we definitely say don't watch the scoreboard. We're going to just keep playing because the game is trying to teach somebody how to finish. Um, I heard of a, a mm. from a, uh, uh, Pastor T.D. Jakes. And he talked about they don't give crowns to people who start stuff. They give crowns to people who know how to finish. And we talked about that. We, 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 we find those snippets. Anything to motivate them that's going to take them to another level. It's important that we pour into our young men. It's important that they understand that life is a big part of adversity. It's just a series of failures. And, and, and every time you get back up, you got to be able to get back up, dust yourself off, and move on. from. And even when you're winning, you got to have an approach to every week like, okay, we're done now. 
that Fort Valley's in the books. We'll learn from the mistakes we made. We'll correct those things. And now we got to move home to Allen. We can't sit back here and celebrate here and then get back next week and plot. Exactly, Coach. I like that framework. And as Mike said, you can use it in a lot of part of life. I try to use it in the classroom as a professor. Uh, great points. Uh, I'm going to have to pick your brain on a couple of more of those quotes. <laughs> and motivating you. I know it. I know it. A.D. Drew, go ahead and follow up with your question, please. I also want to give you congratulations, Coach, on uh, first victory for Clark Atlanta in two, in, uh, two seasons. And while my guys are focusing on the philosophical uh, aspect of coaching, I want to get back to that game on the field yesterday, Coach. Uh, gave up two two uh, touchdowns early due to due to uh, issues on special teams, and not not using proper English, but I'm gonna say this: the math ain't mathing because David Wright threw for seven touchdowns, but you only had 45 points due to some special teams issues. So let's let's talk about those special teams because if there was if there was one if there's one area of opportunity for you going from week one to week two. From a fan's point of view, it has to be your special teams, Coach. There's no doubt about it. And, and, and let me be honest with myself. Uh, we were so busy trying to get the – when you got to go on the road, that's a, you, go, you can only travel with 58 players. So from camp to the 14 to 20 days you got before you play, um, you know, a game, you got to find the right 58 to get on that bus to play on your offense and your defense. So, so when you was doing that, we spent a little bit too much – time you know dealing with that and i think that special teams got to kind of set back to the side a little bit um we had to use all areas of the special teams and it showed up when you play a great team we had to use the hands team at the end of the game we had to use the punt team we had to use a trick punt that moved to get a first down um so we could keep the game going so we had to do a fake um then we had to um we had two bad snaps um, those things are, are something we got to work on. But, you know, going on the road with your 58 and trying to go into an environment, you had to try to pick those best 58. So special teams only got about a week and a half of good work, and it still wasn't enough. And and you got a freshman kicker, a freshman mm. long snapper, and both of them playing in a game of Fort Valley. I mean, you go to Fort Valley, Albany State, Tuskegee, the Blue Bloods of our conference, and you got that as the first game. And this team has notoriously gotten, I'm talking about drizzled by these teams. I mean, you got to think that that still resonates in some of those kids' minds. Last year, I think Fort, Fort Valley um, beat them really bad. So just to get them to change their mindset and approach, um, when we went down 14, it really was, to me, as a coach, I was like, okay. Let's see what they do. So what now? What? Let's see what they do now. Let's see how they respond to this. Let's see how well they keep fighting and seeing if my message is getting across to them. And, and it did. So, they, they, you know, when the kickers, we try not to be – I tell the coaches, don't be negative with the kids. Pat them on the head and keep them focused so that he can do what he needs to do. Yes, we got some work to do there. I, I, to get a win in a place like that with all the special teams that we had to pull out and we got a block kick, <laughs> you know, those things we got to work on. And, and, and it's, and it's order because that's the weakness. When Allen pulls up the film or when they get to see us play, they're going to feel like, oh, we got an edge on them. We can we can try to beat them in their special team there. Yeah, can I have a quick follow-up, Doc? Uh, we're right up against them. Go ahead, make it quick. Uh, it's going to be a quick follow-up. You talk about uh, having to reach deep down when you're down 14 nothing, But let's talk about at the end of the game when you – when you were up, uh, I believe, what, uh, 16, 17, or whatever, it was 29, 45 was the score. And then Fort Valley starts mounting the comeback against you. Talk about having to hold on there at the end of the game there, Coach. Of course. Well, you, it's the same thing with winning and losing. I mean, you got to teach kids how to play finish. You got to learn how to finish. I mean, when you got, you know, you got to kill a net with a sledgehammer. And sometimes <laughs> the kids don't understand that. You know, we're up. Now they get relaxed. And, 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 you know, it's just like when you're in life. When you get up, people don't understand when it gets to the top. Sometimes it's harder to stay at the top than it was to get to the top. And when you get to the top, you got to continue to keep bringing it. And I think some of the kids got lax. And they mm -hmm. thought that, oh, the game is over. We bought, we didn't won. They celebrated in their mind, thinking about where I'm going to do after the game. And, and, and Fort Valley is a championship caliber team. So guess what they did? They did what I thought they were going to do. They weren't going to lay down for you. 
Losing teams do that, but winning teams gonna figure out a find a way to win. And I think they took it all the way down to the wire. My hat goes off to Sean Gibbs. He is an excellent football coach. He does a tremendous job of preparing his kids. KD is probably one of the best quarterbacks next to David Wright in this conference. Uh, you know, basing off what happened last year, I, he's a winner. He plays like a winner. They got players just like everybody else. Number seven was a beast. I don't know who he is, but he had his day yesterday. <laughs> and, and, and you got a guy like that out on the field to throw the ball to. I mean, hey, we we, we got to continue to play the next play. Oh, I love it, Coach. Great question, Drew. I'm glad you got that one in there. As we get to let you go, I know you got a busy day, and we appreciate your time. Uh, Rocky Miller says, Coach, uh, confidence and belief is contagious, and I have to agree with him. Um, Charles and I had a chance to interview you uh, during the SIC Media Day in Atlanta uh, over there at the College Football Hall of Fame, and I automatically uh, knew. Um, I saw because of Drew told us to keep an eye on you in terms of Allen, but after that dialogue, I was like, yeah, they'll be all right. They they are gonna be good sooner than later, and they are gonna catch some folks. So I just want to say congratulations. I'll send you a picture. I'll let you know how much that I'm supporting that, and I'll put it on the show uh, before the end of it. But I'll send a picture and let you know that uh, at least on my side, I feel very comfortable in terms of <laughs> saying that uh, the Clark Atlanta Panthers are gonna be reckoned with in terms of that. So but don't get too mad in terms of the poll ranking that comes out this week. This week. <laughs> Here we go with the hey, he gonna hit that thing with the <laughs> Don't call that yet, we, we got hey, the I got a, I got enough problems, you know. I'm going I'm going back to a place that I started from the ground up. Um a lot of people love and respect me there. I love and respect them there, but right. they on the schedule, they got a line up just like everybody else and we're going to do the best we can do. And it's no hard feelings. I, I, I love Allen University. The people at Allen University really embraced me. You know how many times I went to Columbia, South Carolina, and never knew Allen University existed? It was mm. right across the street from the field. But to go wow. over and meet some good, good home people and good Christian folks that really believed in what they were doing, it was 200 students there. And I just love um, those guys. I, I love Allen, and it's going to be a heart-filled place to go back. Those kids showed up at the game, and one of the one of the young students had on a shirt with my picture on it. And I was like, wow. They were at the Fort Valley game, and I'm like, look, this is going to be hard to uh, come this Saturday when we play them at, at Panther Stadium on our new red turf. Certainly, and uh, I agree with that. I hate going to say it again, rat poison, you know. <laughs> That clothes went around. I agree with Chuck. The red field is different. I mean, it took, us, <laughs> it took us a minute to get used to. <laughs> oh man, Coach, uh, we're gonna keep up with you uh, throughout the year, no matter what goes on. So we would love to have you back, particularly if we can get a couple of more of these wins. We'll find a way to bring you back on. Thank uh, you. To talk Mark. about uh, how much work is going in, changing the landscape. Uh, you said this early. You said. Um, we have everything we need here at Clark Atlanta University. We can win. And you showed it from day one uh, that it's going to be a lot more of that. And certainly look forward to this matchup, you said, with Allen. It should, should be a good one. Uh, but I want to say thank you, Coach, for your time. Um, and we will see you around. And I, as I said, I'll send you a text and uh, let me know what your thoughts on it. Thanks, Coach. Thank you, and I appreciate you guys. Go Panthers. Go Panthers. Thank you, Coach. Great, right back to this break. <laughs> It's never too early to plant the seed, to share the tradition, and instill a sense of pride in your HBCU with your little ones. HBCU Pride and Joy Children's Boutique helps you share your school spirit with a wide selection of adorable kids' apparel and accessories officially licensed from your favorite HBCU. Visit HBCUPrideJoy.com and follow us on all social media at HBCU Pride Joy on Facebook and Twitter. Supermarket sushi, really? No. Wait, Troy, you work here? I'm never not working. Like head and shoulder scalp shield technology, up to 100% dandruff protection, even between washes. Never not working, huh? <laughs> oh, Troy, you're such a good teacher. Yeah, I know. <laughs> never not working. Never not working. Never ever not working. Are you serious? Never not working. Dandruff protection that's never not working. Head and shoulder scalp shield technology. Hey, grab me one, too. Sure.
Garmin Ultra Soft has so much cushiony softness, it's hard for your family to remember. They can use less. Sweet pillows of softness. This is soft. Holy Charmin. Oh, excuse me. Roll it back, everybody. Sorry. Charmin Ultra Soft is so cushiony soft, you'll want more. But it's so absorbent, you can use less. So it's always worth it. Now, what did we learn about using less? You gotta roll it back, everybody. <laughs> we all go. Why not enjoy the go with Charmin? Press the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they want a lot left. And who the ball? Who the ball? So listen to Professor Yes Sir yes, and pay attention because he gon' teach a lesson. Yes. This is Dr. Mills inside the HBC Sports Lab with Mike Washington, Charles Bishop, and none other than A.D. Drew. Gentlemen, I told you I was going to surprise him. Give him a little shout out. You know I was going to do the little Clark Atlanta. You know, I had the hats for all the listeners that I already got. So if you have a victory, you want me to show up for your team wearing a hat, send them over this way. I got a couple of them, uh, as you see over here. And we'll get it on on that Sunday edition. What do you think, Doc, y'all? Doc, you got that old school Oscar Gamble look there with the fro popping out from the cap. I like that. I <laughs> yeah, those baseball fans out there, y'all know what's up with that. <laughs> Man. Let's they get into ride. some of these matchups that took place uh, yesterday. I'm going to go with you, Mike, first. Um, obviously, you were there live. You saw the Prairie View a and game against Texas Southern University at Prairie View. Uh, Texas Southern was able to get uh, that victory that kept uh, Prairie View out of the end zone. Prairie View did score nine points, yep. but as you might imagine, they were all on field goals. Uh, Mike, what was your thoughts of that matchup? Well, uh, well, obviously, as a Panther fan, I'm disappointed, but as a you know journalist, an objective journalist, yeah, I mean, you had to be disappointed with Prairie View's effort. You watched the first half. Their offensive line, they were getting manhandled at the offensive line. They couldn't have a sustainable drive that led to a touchdown. I think one of their best drives came when they switched quarterbacks in the second half, went all the way down the field, but yet ended up with just three points. So, you know, you, you know that was my takeaway is, you know, what's going to work on the offensive scheme? How are they going to execute to get – Tangible points, tangible points meaning uh, touchdowns. Uh, the other thing is, you know, they've got they got a heck of a, a schedule coming up. Who's going to be the quarterback now? You know, uh, going forward, mm. um, they have some good plays or, or whatever. Uh, they had some some dropped passes in the sec and in, in wide open passes where some you know the tight end. I think he had three or four drops. Um, so you know, they got some questions to answer. That's my second takeaway. First, who's going to be quarterback? Second, you know, how are you going to answer a lot of these questions? And and third, you know, the offensive line seemed to do a little bit better, but, you know, you're kind of concerned. The other On the other side, you have to be surprised with TSU. Texas Southern is a lot better than – there were some players. I was like, where did this player come from? Uh, I guess the Ronald Green, the, the running back. Oh, my goodness. I mean, he was, he was a battering ram. I think he had, what, CB2 touchdowns. I know you had a lot of the – the stats, but I was really surprised at how they were able to, at, at times, march up and down the field. So those are some of my takeaways. I got a lot going through my head, but you also have to tip your head up to the Chris Dishman and 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 the Tex. I mean, and the uh, TSU uh, Tigers on a, on a, on a well played game. Charles, I'm gonna follow up with you with that same game. You were there in a media perspective, so you really got to catch it on. You had some great post game interviews. Or we'll make sure we'll get some of that on later this week um, uh, so we can edit them and get them to the appropriate place. But uh, what were your thoughts going through the game? And then certainly uh, based on the post game with the championship trophy presentation, well, I saw you got some good pictures with the board, uh, AD, VP Granger, Dr. Granger, I should say, and the, um, Coach Disman himself. What were your thoughts? Uh, you know, uh, I think the, the thing that jumps out, and I'm going to echo Mike sentiment, was uh, Texas Southern won in the trenches. Uh, when you stop and take a look at it, they rushed for 163 yards uh, on the offensive side of the ball. Defensively, they limited Prairie View to only 21 yards in that rushing. That jumped out at me. 
uh, with regards to that. They also was able to get to the quarterback. They got five sacks on the night. So the fact that they were more physical than Prairie View, that kind of blew me away. Uh, and uh, and I think the mindset is right at Texas Southern. And one of the things that I heard, uh, you know, uh, in, in the midst of the postgame celebration, because it was a true celebration, it was a transformational win for them, but the big thing was a couple of the players was that, um, made sure, and it's the senior leadership on the team, made sure that they wanted everybody to know, put it in perspective. It's just game one. Uh, we want to continue to uh, allow for this this win to really sprout roots. And I think that was the big thing that really caught my ear last night, you know, because, you know, if you're a Texas Southern fan, shout out to Diane Weber. I mean, you hadn't beaten Prairie View in forever and a day. And to not be caught up in the emotion of that, that was something that really caught my ear uh, last night. But uh, just, that's, a tr- that's a tremendous win. I think that's a win not too many people had checked off. Uh, with regards to Texas Southern knocking out Prairie View. That's a great point. Tremendous win. They got Southern next, not next game, but next conference game, I should say. And they can find themselves in a really good pole position as they continue this season. A.D. Drew, I'm going to flip it on you. I want to go to uh, Tallahassee. Tallahassee. Tallahassee, the FAMU Rattlers, like something about that second half, that fourth quarter, particularly in this matchup where they – had what I thought was a tremendous comeback win. I know some people may be frustrating that they're not necessarily beating up on teams, but many people that watch this game knew that South Carolina State Bulldogs, um, if you allow me, we talk about this in some ways, old MEAC rivalry, um, one of the shortest distance where the teams travel back and forth. Obviously, I know Bethune-Cookman is shorter uh, but that game is played in the classic format. But between South Carolina State and Bulldogs, and I told everybody on the Saturday edition of Game Time, when you think about this, this goes back to the SIEC day. So they've been playing this in three different conference iterations uh, in terms of what it looks like. And that 22 to 18, two touchdowns uh, as they were down double digits, two uh, touchdowns I thought was a significant statement. We were in the suites. When I say we, that's Mike and I. Uh, we allowed Charles to kind of slide down there at times, but you know he he got to work. Got to the work. <laughs> you know, I'm just saying. <laughs> we got a chance to watch this game, so I don't want to get your thoughts in terms of the rattlers. I have them at number two, but uh, that was impressive. It'll be interesting to see as we'll talk about the next segment in terms of the number one team, North Carolina Central. Pate was playing the number five team, Alabama State, which has a chance to make a statement. But in terms of this matchup, Drew, what were your thoughts on it? Um, concerning, you know, if uh, after, after two weeks, if I were an investor, I may consider selling off some of my family stock. I'm not going to dump it. Exactly. But I, but I may diversify my portfolio. If that, if that exactly. I want to know who you're going to diversify it with. I asked that as a follow-up question, but continue your thoughts here. And uh, and, and and let me give let me give you three reasons why. Mm. Number one, once again, Fab, you put the ball on the ground, which caused them to leave points off off the board. Yeah, special teams also gave uh, left left points off the board with. Their uh, with their with their special team. How many times can you rely on Daniel Richardson to be super QB one and bring you back in the fourth quarter? Not a recipe for a championship uh for a championship seed. You know you you you'll be you'll be some teams. You know he's not Patrick Mahomes. Where I'm gonna bet on, but even Patrick Mahomes fails at uh at certain points in time. So yeah. I am tremendously concerned about uh, about what's going on. Once again, Fab, you gave up a lot on the ground also. So the, the run defense has got to tighten up if Fab, you is going to uh, get back to championship, remain at championship level. Because one thing that the dark high defense has done in the past has make, been making teams one-dimensional. They are not doing that right now. Luckily, FAMU has played two teams that rely heavily on their run, being South Carolina State, be that Norfolk State. What's going to happen when the scripts get flipped and you have teams that have more pass-friendly offense? 
I'm interested Bingo. to see what happens. Exactly. Yeah, I, I, AD Drew is always pessimistic, but I like the way he breaks it down. And I think there's some points there, but I'm going to go to Charles because Charles is like, man, I've never seen somebody with a victory, two victories on the oh, lead. Oh, oh, my goodness. <laughs> Rattler fans, can you get off the edge, please? This is week two. We've seen this team championship DNA show up. They know how to close the show. And that is the thing that I take away from this win. I mean, we the, the, what, look at the juxtaposition of this. We took a look at two teams, Clark Atlanta and Texas Southern, that are in the process of learning how to finish out games. That FAMU team, the thing that scares me most about them is when the lights are the brightest, when their back is up against the wall, and you got to strike, strike, strike again. I, listen, they, they, they actually do it. So, I mean, why are we diversifying the portfolio? That's a championship caliber team. Make we it. So, wow, we talking about this. diversifying this, the portfolio. Uh, let me follow up with this, Drew, and I want all of y'all to get in here. I think you kind of gave some cheat notes on this. Uh, but talking about stocks, bulls up, bears down, uh, sticking with you, Charles, and I'm coming back to Mike and then you, Drew, out of these three teams, where is your stock? Bears up, bulls down. Or of these three, which one do you think has the highest stock? Because I think you all are probably saying all these are up. Clark Atlanta with their victory over Fort Valley State. Delaware State with their win as we talked about earlier, over Sacred Hype Pioneers. And then you had Texas Southern win over Prairie View and Panthers. Charles, stocks up, bears down. Which one do you got the highest? Uh, I think when you have a quarterback like uh, David Wright, uh, you, you're going into some ball games with some high confidence. So my stock is definitely going to be up for the Clark and Lamp Panthers. Mike, what direction are you going Oh, I, I, I echo that. Clark and Lamp Panthers, by, by sure, the stock is up. I agree. A.D. Drew, you can answer that and then respond to Charles in terms of your uh, <laughs> stock, selling some of your stock and fan. You, go ahead, Drew. While I'm bullish on all three of them, I am yes. probably the most bullish on Delaware State right now. It's because fascinating. They're doing it with their run game. They're doing it with their defense. So even to get even to get say FBS Hawaii, their defense and their run game kept them in their game. It's just that the body clocks finally caught up with them, which is why that school wound up a little bit more one-sided than, than it really was. If, the, if that's a seven if that's a seven o'clock kick on East Coast time, I think that's I think that game is is, is a lot different. Plus the fact that Delaware State, only five games really count on Delaware State schedule, while Clark Atlanta has to get through an eight games uh, conference schedule. Same thing with uh, Texas Southern. They have to get through an eight-game conference schedule. So the one that's, that has the potential to rise the most is, is Delaware State. And getting back to Charles's question, <laughs> yeah, fam, you may have that championship pedigree, that championship DNA, but is it because, fam, you knows how to close games? Or the two opponents that they have have not learned how to close games out yet. What happens when they play it? What happens when they play at Jackson State? Who knows how to close our games? What happens, uh, uh, well, you know, uh, uh, Alabama State, who's been, who's been known to fumble the ball away? What happens if they were to play at North Carolina Central? Who knows how to close our games? You know, Howard almost closed out their game in the Celebration Bowl last year. What happened with this iteration of Howard? So don't, don't, that's why I'm concerned. If the two opponents that they played, have have not had their pedigree where they know how to close out games versus FAMU. Good stuff. One more question in this segment. We'll go to our last segment, and we'll focus on the games of today uh, to close out this week. Uh, but I'm going to ask you a couple of questions on some teams that I want to get your thoughts on. Uh, I'm going to go with you, Charles, and Mike in, return, in regards to the FCS major division program. And, Drew, I'm going to take you down for one of the Division II programs. So, Work with me on these and let me know what you think. Charles, I'm going to start with you. I want to get your thoughts in terms of the Tennessee State uh, win over Mississippi Valley. Not that they won, but they dominated. In that matchup, uh, Mississippi Valley State scored late, really all of their points, if you would, uh, in that fourth quarter. But number 11, Tennessee State Tigers go to 1-0. Defeat number 19, Mississippi Valley State Delta Devils that followed 0-41 to 21. 
give me some uh, basic thoughts on that matchup. And Mike, I'm gonna ask you about the Morgan State matchup uh, over Hampton. Go ahead, Charles. I mean, I think when you take a look at it, there was a dominant performance uh, from uh, Tennessee State. I would have liked to have seen a little bit more uh, from Mississippi Valley. Uh, uh, that was a little surprising. Uh, I mean, because I thought they had a, a starting quarterback who, uh, and Tajarian Williams, who I assumed uh, would be a little bit more in the flow of the game, but he was only four of 11 passing for 30 yards, and Valley ended up using uh, three different quarterbacks. So, Ah, that's that's not a good thing, especially when I thought uh, to Jerry and Williams was uh, sort of going to take that next step. I, I wanted this game to be a little bit closer, but Tennessee State did what they had to do. It was a dominant performance uh, in regards to uh, Draylon Ellis, 357 yards in the air. That's huge. Good stuff. And as I come to you, Mike, uh, with that Morgan State matchup over Hampton, uh, Drew, I'm going to ask you to either pick between one of these two. One will be a, a win. Uh, in the SIAC, and the other one would be a loss. Miles at number five falls to 0 1 with a tough non conference loss to West Alabama Tigers, 16 to 15. Uh, or you can talk about the win of Edward Waters coming from behind to defeat Morehouse, 28 to 11. Before we do that, Mike, I want to get your thoughts on this uh, Morgan State matchup as they got it done. Uh, everybody kind of had one eye on Morgan. I have them as high as ranked as number six. They defeat Hampton Pirates, who many people thought had probably one of the best quarterbacks coming back at the major division level, but there was a coaching change, and we know how that tends to affect things. Uh, 30 to 28, they had a double digit lead late in that game. Hampton scored a touchdown late to kind of close things up. But what were your thoughts about Morgan, uh, Morgan State uh, going on the road and getting it done against the Hampton Pirates? Well, first thing that surprised me, I looked at this game kind of with a side eye. Um, I thought, actually, to be honest, I thought Man Hampton would come out with a victory since it was on the road. I gave them kind of home field advantage. Morgan uh, Mo Morgan State surprised me in that they were able to run the ball relatively well. So, I mean, they, you know, they had, you know, they were kind of balanced. They had 55, you know, rushing attempts, uh, you know, versus, you know, so many what it was like uh, only eight passing so you know balance is solely certainly off from that they they were more rushing heavy then they held the ball for 40 minutes 43 minutes versus Hampton only holding the ball for 20 22 minutes give or take so they held the ball for twice as long they controlled the clock they controlled the game they had a halftime lead and they were able to for the most part maintain it except in the third quarter when when Hampton rallied back uh, the other thing is is uh, the quarterback Smith for Morgan. He only had about 80 yards. Um, you you typically expect more of the quarterback. So while it was a tough win on the road, I'll I'll put quotes on it and say it's a tough win. But I think I'm going to need to see a little bit more from Morgan State before I say all right, they're a bona fide you know top five. I, you know I I yeah, I keep them in the top ten. But I didn't see enough other than that they could run the ball really well. They could capitalize on turnovers, and that's what seemed to hurt Hampton. But, uh, you know, let, let's let hold the press on that little bit. You know, put your anointing oil just away, away for a second. <laughs> on Morgan State. Hey, you know what, Dwight? The thing that jumped out for me, Morgan State only averaged 16.1 yard uh, um, yeah. uh, in terms of scoring last year, and they put up 30. So I had to really – Look and see, like what happened? How did they get thirty? That thirty from Morgan State. That that oh, that, that kind of yeah. Out. If they can do anything like that with that defense, you think they'll be all right? I know Mike don't want to buy the stock now, but I'm saying uh, bulls up. With that, AD Drew, which direction you want to go with the Miles Golden Bears' tough loss on the road at West Alabama, or the victory by Edward Waters over Morehouse? I think you're muted there, Drew. I'm um, actually I have to go with the Ever Waters Morehouse game. Okay. Because I actually had an opportunity to uh, catch a lot of that uh, game. And the word of the day for that game was sloppy. Mm. Uh, both, both teams turned the ball over a lot. Don't have the final stats in front of me. But I do know for a fact, Morehouse threw five interceptions in that game. But they were still in the game. Wow. 
Morehouse uh, score and the, their defense scored one. T- it was either their defense or the special team scored one touchdown, and they got two safeties. When the last time we seen two safeties in a uh, in a college football game by the same team? Kind of kind of hard, kind of hard to do. Uh, hand scratcher. You know, coach, coach Keaton says he uh, don't know uh, players' names. I, I'm gonna give him a name to go ahead and put up on the board so for when they play Ever Waters. You better figure out the name Johnny Jones and figure out why Morehouse left him so wide open because he was the offense for Ever Waters <laughs> on yesterday. So uh, I, I don't know who's throwing him the ball, but I sure know who's on the uh, back end of the receive uh, of the receptions for for Morehouse as he, uh, I mean, for Ever Waters as he accounted for a couple of their touchdowns and a chunk of their yards offensively. So. But Ever Waters, a team that we were so bullish on coming into the season, oh, they are hold right now. We, we I, I got to see better out of Ever Waters, or I, or I may have to uh, put them on the market and see what I can get out of if I see another performance like this in week two. Man, boy, you talking about a uh, uh, ga- uh, group of gambler in New York Stock Exchange? Uh, Ad, you not playing with folks? He's trading stocks up and down. He's planning on winning. Crypto. Everybody else crypto, not uh, getting in crypto, line. Yeah, everybody else may not be in Atlanta for the celebration boat, but I'll be damned if A.D. Drew is not going to be there in terms of where his stock is going because he's going to make sure he has the right one. With that being said, let me give a shout out to Winston-Salem Rams, uh, the fighting gaithers as Charles has uh, n- nicknamed him. I love it. They defeat Bluefield State 34-3 to as they go to 1-0 and and Bluefield State, Big Blue, falls to 0-1. We'll take our last break. We'll come back and we'll have a final 10-minute uh, segment to look at some key games and matchups today to get you set for your close of your Labor Day weekend. Stick with us. We'll be right back after this last break. At Auto Masters LLC, our mission is to serve our community by providing quality automobiles at affordable prices. All of our vehicles are inspected and certified to offer you the confidence in knowing you have a quality vehicle. Our goal is to provide you with a seamless process and positive experience for your automobile purchase. Financing recommendations and specific vehicle inquiries are available at your request. You can find us at www.automasters06.com and like, follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Also, please feel free to contact Terrence Miles at 601-927-7794. And oh yeah, Tell them Sonia sent you. It's never too early to plant the seed, to share the tradition, and instill a sense of pride in your HBCU with your little ones. HBCU Pride and Joy Children's Boutique helps you share your school spirit with a wide selection of adorable kids apparel and accessories officially licensed from your favorite HBCU. Visit HBCUPrideJoy.com and follow us on all social media at HBCU Pride Joy on Facebook and Twitter. Supermarket sushi, really? No. Wait, Troy, you work here? I'm never not working. Like head and shoulder scalp shield technology, up to 100% dandruff protection, even between washes. Never not working, huh? Oh, Troy, you're such a good teacher. Yeah, I know. (laughs) Never not working. Never not working. Never ever not working. Are you serious? Never not working. Dandruff protection that's never not working. Head and shoulder scalp shield technology. Hey, grab me one, too. Charmin Ultra Soft has so much cushiony softness, it's hard for your family to remember. They can use less. Sweet pillows of softness. This is soft. Holy Charmin. Oh, excuse me. Roll it back, everybody. Sorry. Charmin Ultra Soft is so cushiony soft, you'll want more. But it's so absorbent, you can use less. So it's always worth it. Now, what did we learn about using less? You gotta roll it back, everybody. <laughs> we all go. Why not enjoy the go with Charmin? 
Them press the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they want a lot, yeah. And who the ball, who the ball. So listen to the professor, uh, yes, sir, yes, sir. And pay attention, Boy. cause he gon' teach a lesson. Yes. Before we get into these matchups today, I want to remind uh, everybody that follows us, you can check out uh, the game. If you would, go ahead and put it on ESPN, turn the volume down, and listen to us as we will do the radio play-by-play. Uh, you can catch it right here on my JBN, uh, various m- social media platforms that we all send that to. So that's uh, Twitter, X, uh, Instagram. You can follow all those. Uh, you can even do it from our perspective on Inside the HBC Sports Lab and follow it on Facebook, and then we'll have it later for you on demand in regards to YouTube. But follow Jericho on my JBN uh, one BCSN. You can check it out to make sure you get the broadcast uh, in terms of our voice and you get all the insights. So I want to make sure I did that. Support us so we can support you. With that being said, let's get in these three matchups today. Uh, I'm going to start with you, um, Drew, in terms of this Virginia State versus, uh, and that's number two, Virginia State versus number six, Benedict, uh, in this CIAA SIEC matchup. I know everybody at that level doesn't necessarily get between these matchups or conferences, but you know me, I love it. It's a 5 p.m. Central Time kickoff that's on the NFL Network uh, Hall of Fame Classic. If that matchup, I think it's three uh, versus five. It should be three. With that being said, AD Drew, uh, what's your thoughts in terms of this matchup? Uh, speaking, of, speaking of cross conferences, Doc, CIAA did uh, have the only victory on the Division II side in a non conference matchup oh. as Virginia Union Molly walked Kentucky State on <laughs> yesterday. Right. Uh, BIAC, mm-hmm. BIAC was, uh, had two victories uh, with Delaware State and Morgan. And uh, SWAC did, and the SWAC did not have a uh, victory. Nor the SIEC had a victory in the non-conference uh, matchup on yesterday. But getting getting you to you already count out your FAMU victory over South Carolina State. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. I, come on I, now. I my mind come on now. On come on, Drew. I, they, I they, are, they are. They are in the SWAC now. My goodness. <laughs> <laughs> they are in the SWAC and, now. And, 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 the, and the bad part is. I rehearsed that in my head about five times coming in, and I still got it wrong. <laughs> you know I had to get you. It's all good, but go ahead. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, getting back to this game uh, today, Benedict. I, I, I wonder what Benedict's going to put on the field because I swear I saw all of Benedict's returning players in Tallahassee on yesterday. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm really curious as to see what kind of product Benedict yep. is going to put out there against uh, Dr. Henry Frazier and Virginia State, who does have a little bit of camaraderie as they're bringing a lot of their players back. So that's going to be uh, th- that's going to be w- what I am going to be looking for. H- how quickly this new version of the Benedict Tigers is going to mesh? Is it going to take it to the third and the fourth quarter for them to, to get together? Will they even get it together in this, in this first game? That's what I'm going to be looking for in uh, that particular matchup. I'm going to stick with you, Drew, uh, on another CIAA SIAC matchup. I wouldn't be uh, remiss with Tuskegee. I have it number eight. Johnson C. Smith is number 22, and a lot of people uh, saw that as low. Many people believe they could be in the top 14, uh, if you would. So I'm intrigued about this one, Red Tails Classic, ESPNU, 6 o'clock. Drew, what are your thoughts on that? Coach Maurice Flowers of Johnson C. Smith is 2-0 and in the Red Tails Classic. Both of those victories coming when he was at Fort Valley. Tuskegee, 1-2 mm-hmm. in the Red Tails Classic. Both of their losses coming to who? Coach Maurice Flowers when he was coaching at Fort Valley. So it's going uh, it's to it's be interesting to see what, what uh, what's happening. Uh, questions at quarterback for Tuskegee against the Johnson C. Smith team, who is the Ooh. representative in the uh, in the Florida Beach Bowl. Tuskegee, what what is their identity going to be? Are they going to be a pass heavy team? Former quarterback as a head coach, and James did a lot of good things when he was playing quarterback at Tuskegee. 
Uh, but, you know, Aaron James is not playing quarterback for Tuskegee anymore. He's got a new, he's got a new crop of uh, athletes. So I really want to see what kind of identity Tuskegee has. Are they going to uh, be a little bit more run-focused? Are they still going to try to sling the ball all over the yard? You know, and, and we're, we're not talking about a Tuskegee team that was a, a bad team last year. They were 6-2 last year, had preseason conference player of the year on de- on defense and uh, Michael King. So it's going to be a real interesting matchup there. Certainly. You're talking about Bulls up. We have the battle of the two golden, the Golden Bulls and the Golden Tigers. So I'm fascinated about the nicknames as well in terms of this. I'm going to get all three of you out of here on this matchup. I want everybody to break it down. I'm going to start with you, Mike, which is a top five matchup. It's, to me, the game of the week uh, in a lot of ways just because the predictive order finished. And people want to know, are these two teams cracked up to what they are? We have the top five, top seven matchup, top six matchup, you would, at the mid-major level. Uh, we just broke down was number two, Virginia State versus number six, Benedict. And that's the Trojans versus the Tigers. But this one is a MEAC swack matchup. Uh, the SWAC is up to an early 2-0 lead over the MEAC. Uh, the Eagles have a chance to save face a little bit for the early season matchups between MEAC and SWAC as they come in at number one, uh, preseason number one, so they have that on their neck. Uh, hadn't heard about the rat poison on this one yet, uh, but with that being said, they were predicted preseason number one uh, coming out of the MEAC, and they face off against preseason number one in the Eastern Division, but I have number five ranked, the Alabama State Hornets. Fascinating between this matchup. Mike, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I think it's fascinating. I think it's odd that if you look at the odds, I think Vegas has Central um, uh, uh, to win in this game by 10, 11 points. However, I, I, you know, I look at the defense and, you know, Alcorn St- I mean, I'm sorry, Alabama State has three, four players, first team defense. Um, so a couple of players to watch, Traquan Thomas, man, uh, Demarcus Cunningham. You got, And then you look at the, the, the rankings and you look at the listings for central defense. None, nobody came in as preseason. So that's one data point. Uh, number two, central is very balanced. But I'm going to give this one and, and go just based on what I see on paper, on defense. I'm going to give this one to Alabama State. Mm. Fascinating. Charles, what direction are you going and what do you say about this Orange Blossom Classic today? That's the Denny's Orange Blossom Classic in uh, Miami Gardens, Florida. <laughs> yeah, this is a fascinating game. This is a prove it to the game for both teams because uh, from an Alabama State perspective, <clears throat> I know they have defense, but offensively, uh, what are they going to do? And to be honest with you, the trend line, uh, when you take a look at uh, some of these SWAT games, is the quarterback play has been kind of meh. Uh, and I know teams are playing up, but uh, I think there might be one quarterback uh, who threw for over 200 yards uh, this past week. Uh, so that's that's just something that you kind of uh, pay attention to. What can Alabama State do offensively? And I pose this question. I mean, Davis Richard was a, a once in a decade type quarterback. Not too many people remember who the quarterback was uh, post uh, superstar quarterback. I mean, if I gave somebody a pop quiz, you can't tell me who played after Steve McNair. If I gave you know, a pop quiz, you can't tell me who played after Casey Terry or Jackson State. Uh, same thing, you know, the, the, the story has been written. Who, who's the quarterback who played after Shador Sanders? So uh, that becomes a question for North Carolina Central offensively. No Davis Richard. Uh, or Mookie Collier, uh, what can Walker Harris bring to the table? Uh, So the trend line is the team that plays probably the best defense and stops the run and and can find something offensively will will win this game. And for that reason, I'm going to go with Alabama State. Let's see what they get done in this game. Good stuff, good stuff. Close it out with you, Drew, in terms of this matchup. What are your thoughts, uh, you can't get much better than this. Top five matchups between the rival conferences. Uh, what do you say in terms of everybody's anticipation of the year, potentially for the Hornets and the Eagles, starting here in the Denny's Orange Blossom Classic in Miami Gardens, Florida? While Charles talks about quarterback play and defense and the concerns that a lot of people have with their quarterbacks this year, early in the season, 
I'm concerned not only in this matchup, but all three matchups of, the, of today with the special team. The one common thing I saw from every game that I watched yesterday, every game was either won or lost or, uh, via a play on special teams or the game was made competitive because of a misplay on special teams. So that's what, that's what I am going to be focused on today, especially when it comes to Alabama State because under uh, the Eddie Robinson era of Alabama State, we have seen Alabama State give away game mm. due to a snafu with their special teams. While I agree Alabama State should win this game, will the special teams from Alabama State be the difference, especially when you're talking about two neutral, two teams playing on a neutral site, which means both teams have their travel rock. Did somebody get left at home that should have been on the special teams because of you going with your travel roster? That's what I'm going to be focused on uh, today as I call this game. Great insight by everybody here. We'll close it out right there again. Let me remind everybody to check us out uh, as we give the BCSN radio version. And check us out this year as we'll be doing BCSN events, uh, doing some live uh, pre-game things and of that nature. While you'll be able to listen to the uh, audio version of the entire game, we kick off uh, providing some pre-game talk at 2 p.m. Eastern. That is 1 p.m. Central. The game, it will be played at 3 p.m. Eastern and 2 p.m. Central. So you check us in an hour early. And let me know your thoughts on that. With that being said, Thank you for listening inside the HBC Sports Lab. Make sure you share our podcast with your friends and colleagues. I am Dr. Kenyatta Cavill, Dean of HBC Sports. Come from inside the lab in the College of HBC Sports on our first Sunday version of Dr. Cavill's Inside the HBC Sports Lab. Shout out to BJ Jones. He's on the road. Joshua Sims Sr. is actually eating breakfast with the North Carolina Central Eagles down there, and that's why they couldn't be on the show. They'll be back on their regular time to give us some insights as well. So we'll see if the pep talk that Joshua Sims Sr. provides will work or not. So we're going to put a lot of weight on him. If they come out with the victory, it's because of Joshua Sims Sr. If they come out with the loss, it's because of Joshua Sims Sr. He did not voice himself appropriately at breakfast <laughs> getting things ready for them. I hope, I hope to hear this. <laughs> exactly. Again, we want to thank you for listening to Dr. Bills inside the HBC Sports Lab with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop. I should have had Mike Washington in the locker room for a curtain. <laughs> I had AD Dr. Granger in the locker room for Texas Southern. You so exactly. Me. I win either way, but I'm just saying, for Charles, uh, for Mike, Charles, you see what happens. What happens when you don't put these people to work? Again, we want to thank you for listening to Dr. Mills Inside the HBC Sports Lab with Mike Washington, Charles Bishop, every Tuesday and Thursday, 6 o'clock Central Standard Time, as well as Sunday at 9 o'clock p.m. Look for us to start spreading the love. We'll have multiple days over the weeks where we'll have versions of Dr. Mills Inside the HBC Sports Lab with people coming on as guests. So you'll be able to catch us on Mondays, Wednesdays, and or Fridays throughout the week over the next couple of weeks uh, as we do our normal spot on Tuesday and Thursday. With that being said, I need to make sure Charles gets his coffee as well as Mike. So I apologize for keeping them up over a little bit because they had a late one sticking with me. Follow me, Dr. Kenyatta Cavill, on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Shout out to the 1876 Athletic Foundation. They did a thing yesterday. Tremendous. Sent all those folks, uh, Roland, Joe Clay, and the ladies uh, that joined us to help get it done. It was for tablets. Thank AD Drew for doing what he does. He's the best in the business of supporting us all. Uh, utility man unlike any other inside the hbc sports lab one on twitter x and x facebook and youtube is inside the hbc sports lab and the best in the business roy evan in terms of making all the ship work dream big continue to move forward we will talk with you soon charles of course mike lecture ad drew i'm not gonna do a kendrick y'all dismiss <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Kim. Say, man, say, it, say it like you mean it next time, A.D. Miss, miss.